Hey guys, welcome back to the Jones Zone. Today, my attention has been brought to Romans chapter 14. And I uh, just want to share with you guys some important scripture out of this chapter. And guys, I'm going to read the whole chapter, so if you just bear with me, uh, we'll get through it. Okay, so starting at verse 1. Except the one whose faith is weak without quarreling over disputable matters. One person's faith allows them to eat anything, but another whose faith is weak eats only vegetables. Verse 3. The one who eats everything must not treat with contempt the one who does not. And the one who does not eat everything must not judge the one who does, for God has accepted them. Who are you to judge someone else's servant? To their own master, servants stand or fall. And they will stand, for the Lord is able to make them stand. Now, all this means is that the people who have built a very faithful relationship with the Lord shouldn't look down on people who are still working on their faith with God. Alright, now moving on with verse 5. One person considers one day more sacred than another. Another considers every day alike. Each of them should be fully convinced in their own mind. Whoever regards one day as special does so to the Lord. Whoever eats meat does so to the Lord, for they give thanks to God. And whoever abstains does so to the Lord and gives thanks to God. All right, so verse 7 says, For none of us lives for ourselves alone, and none of us dies for ourselves alone. If we live, we live for the Lord, and if we die, we die for the Lord. So, whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. For this very reason, Christ died and return to life so that he might be the Lord of both the dead and the living. You then, why do you judge your brother and sister? Or why do you treat them with contempt? For we will all stand before God's judgment seat. It is written, as surely as I live, says the Lord, every knee will bow before me, every tongue will acknowledge God. Therefore, let us stop passing judgment on one another, Instead, make up your mind not to put any stumbling block or obstacle in the way of a brother or sister. I am convinced, being fully persuaded in the Lord Jesus, that nothing is unclean in it itself. But if anyone regards something as unclean, then for that person it is unclean. If your brother or sister is distressed because of what you eat, you are no longer acting in love. Do not by your eating destroy someone for whom Christ died. Okay, so there you have it. We shouldn't judge someone for what they're consuming, whether it's food or drink, a certain genre of book that they're reading, shows they watch, or video games that they're playing. It's fine, as long as it isn't causing someone else to stumble. An example of this would be like, uh, let's say, if you're a Christian and you were listening to music with curse words in it. Uh, now... If there happens to be other Christians around and they start feeling uncomfortable because of the kind of music you're listening to, you know, the lyrics and all that, then that would clearly be something that causes them to stumble. So what you're consuming would be a problem at that point. But at the same time, because someone is listening to that kind of music, we shouldn't be thinking we're holier than that person because they're listening to that music that has a few curse uh, words in it. Because what's unclean for you might not be unclean for them. So, we should just keep that in mind. Okay, now for me, one of my preferred forms of media or entertainment is video games. I enjoy storytelling in a format where I can see what's going on and participate in the unraveling of that story to some degree. Now, I can tell that there are a few Christians who think that because I play video games that somehow doesn't make me a devout Christian or something. And that's simply not true. Because I make sure to put the Lord before my entertainment. Some people think that playing video games is like uh, somehow indicative of a person's level of maturity as an adult. And, you know, they'll, they'll I've had situations, they'll... Um, where they'll be like, dude, you're still playing them violent video games and you're 30? And I'll be like, yeah, and you're watching Jeffrey Dahmer cannibalizing people on Netflix, and you go to the club on Friday nights. 
Yeah, because as a Christian, you know, that sounds like just an amazing place to meet your future wife, who you'll happily be married to for the rest of your life. Okay, now verse 16. Therefore, do not let what you know is good be spoken of as evil. Alright? So if I'm playing the game or whatever it is that I'm doing that's good for me, it's not harming anybody, I'm minding my business, someone wants to go there and, 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 and try to judge me and say what I'm doing is, is somehow contributing to evil in the world or whatever it is, be like, hey, look, this is good right here what I'm doing. I mean, I'm minding my business. You know what I'm saying? I'm not making another person trip or, or stumble or anything like that with what I'm doing. Uh, I'm not uh, defying or uh, breaking a commandment with what I'm doing. By physically interacting with the real world and causing someone harm. Okay, so what's the issue? There's nothing evil with what I'm doing. I mean, you can just interpret it that way. All right, now, verse 17. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Because anyone who serves Christ in this way is pleasing to God and receives human approval. Verse 19, let us therefore make every effort to do what leads to peace and to mutual edification. Do not destroy the work of God for the sake of food. All food is clean, but it's wrong for a person to eat anything that causes someone else to stumble. It is better not to eat meat or drink wine or to do anything else that will cause your brother or sister to fall. Whatever you believe about these things, keep between yourself and God. Blessed is the one who does not condemn himself by what he approves. Okay? But whoever has doubts is condemned if they eat because their eating is not from faith. And everything that does not come from faith is sin. So, what this means is that, like, if you're, whatever it is that you're consuming, media, food, drink, whatever it is, if you're starting to have doubts, uh, you know, on your, on your conscience, something's weighing on your conscience, then what that could mean is that you shouldn't be doing that thing. You shouldn't be that activity or consuming that food. Okay, now again, that key word is that you shouldn't be doing that activity. Alright? It doesn't mean that it's not good for someone else. But at the same time, that doesn't mean this entire chapter, that is, it doesn't mean that this is, this is somehow justifying that you can do anything that you want, you can consume anything that you want. Okay, whatever it is that you're doing has to be within the context of the Ten Commandments. You just can't be like, oh, I don't have a guilty conscience, you know, to commit adultery or idolatry. Idolatry would be a better example, because that's something that might not actually cause somebody to stumble. And that can be literally bowing on your knees and praying to, you know, a, 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 an object or whatever it is. Or actually objectifying another person, okay? Okay, giving more admiration to them and adoration to them than you would to God. Uh, so that's basically um, all I have for you guys today. Uh, thank you for listening. Stay blessed.